Hallelujah. We are blessed to have a great man of wisdom and experience in our midst today. He's been with us since Friday. On Friday, he was here with the singles and um, said some profound things. On Saturday, with the couples, he said, you must have something of sale value in your house. He said, don't look for side chicks. Look for side deals. Tell a man around you, don't look for side chicks. Look for side deals. Praise the Lord. Reduce the leakages in your life to accumulate wealth. Don't buy emotionally. Buy for purpose. If men treat you like trash, when they need you, let them pay cash. If you don't value your time and life, people will help you waste it. The poor man cannot be helped without an attitudinal change. Listen. Don't eat in your planting season like those who are in their harvest season. Avoid someone who sees something wrong with everything. When you don't have much, work hard. Tell somebody, work hard. Favor is attracted by the actions of your faith. He said it is 70% attitude, 30% aptitude. Don't become a director when you don't have direction. Try to be a comfort zone for people to run to. Don't go after proceeds without process. Always ask yourself the cost of your activities. Don't talk anyhow. Don't live anyhow. Don't let the circumstances of your life make you settle for something less than you. Create dreams and let people, let your dreams determine your spouse. Instead of quoting him and quoting him, maybe we should just let him speak for himself this morning. Can you rise to your feet as we receive Reverend Dr. Charles Apoki? Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, speak to us again in a new dimension. Minister to our minds, our spirits, and our bodies. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. Even if person no get anointing, we now go create anointing for him for this church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for our senior pastor here and for all of you who are here. In the, is the second service I said, I spoke on becoming your own prophet. But when your prophecy manifests, there is a behavioral pattern that you are supposed to cultivate if you have not cultivated it before. So, I'm going to speak on meeting your destiny helper. I said in the previous service that you will definitely need people to succeed in life. And we are still speaking using Ruth as a character study. Ruth chapter 2 verse 6. Okay, it's from verse 5. Then Boaz said unto his servant that was set over the reapers, whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and had continued from the morning until now, that she tarried a little 
in the house. Okay. Please look up. Let's read verse 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found favor in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? If you go further on, there is a place where she said, Who am I that I'm less than one of your handmaids? I think it's verse 13. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me, and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaids. One of the things you need in life is social intelligence. Social intelligence is the knowledge of how to interact with people in the social space. Knowing what to do, when to do it, what to say, how to say it, why you should say it, the tone and the pitch which you, you will say it matters a great deal. When you see talented and gifted people that always migrate from one prominent man to the other without achieving something, know that they lack social intelligence. When you see somebody from a family where there are prominent people and it's complaining that there's no person to help him, it is most likely his fault. When you meet somebody who is saying that I have a rich brother and he's not helping me but he's helping outsider, the most likely problem is his himself. Every day in life, you meet people who are supposed to change your stories. They might be poor people. Like I heard um, the man of mountain and fire. What's his name again? The, the Dukoya. He made first class. And he went for a scholarship interview. Or there was an advert. But he got there late. And he met a messenger. The messenger asked him, what do you want? He said, I came for this scholarship advert. And then the man told him that the deal is over. And he said, sir, I have a first class. And the messenger was concerned and went to meet the director. And the director hollered, what is it? The time has elapsed. And he said, but this boy has a first class. He said, let him come in. That was how he had a scholarship to go further. A lot of people, one of the problems with poverty is aggression. You don't see rich men fighting them, burn houses. The rich don't fight their fights. Their lawyers fight for them. The rich employ the poor to fight for them. Because the rich know that poor people don't like themselves. There's a tragedy with poverty is the Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome is when you fall in love with your kidnapper. <laughs> Transiting from poverty will require definitely meeting somebody who has reached where you want to go. And that is what is called breakthrough. It is not passing through a wall. You will suffer too many injuries. <laughs> and Ruth had prayed to meet to fall into the farm step into the farm of who will grant her favor and then she met this man number one I told you somebody is watching you you are like a pilot of your own destiny for each flight a pilot makes hours are calculated for him points are being added to your life and subtractions are being made as you interact with people, you are transacting your future. As you interact with people, small or great. And it is the way you relate with them. If she went into that farm and quarreled with the foreman, immediately she entered. I have a sister-in-law. She is Igbo, married to Orobo. He said, Orobo people, they beat other people's wife. 
you are a stranger among us and you are abusing us majority and you are married to us and it is through us you will gain favor. Then the boy now insulted her tribe. And because of that attitudinal disposition, apart from me who has lived in Igbo land, most people don't favor her. So knowing when to talk, what to say, how to say it, whom to say it to, matters. There are opportunities you have missed because of your character. For those of us who grew up in abject poverty, we know that we needed people to take us to where we were going to. And so, Ruth was spoken to by Boaz, commended her for the previous point she had accumulated, but she can mess it up at that point. If you don't handle that point well, you can mess it up. I've been speaking to Total in this town for up to two or three or four years now. The last meeting I came for, I was not recognized as a guest speaker. They recognized every other person, the queens that came. I came into the hall. I sat somewhere. They didn't recognize me as a guest speaker. And they introduced people. Somebody came to sit near me. They said, no, go to the head table. That means I was sitting in the leg table. And they introduced the first guest speaker, River State, when I get babes, so the daughter of the former deputy governor, a Toby, a CNN reporter of this, the NN, uh, N, uh, NTDC. This lady spoke, spoke. I could be angry with my non introduction. I sat down. When she was speaking and I saw that she was manifesting at a realm beyond my preparation, I started to prepare when she was speaking. <laughs> it's just common sense. I was the only robo man in the platform. I was the only robo person in that hall. And now a daughter of the soil with connections and exposure was manifesting at a realm. I needed to up my own game. If man does not recognize you or introduce you, make sure you introduce yourself. If you are a lion and they treat you like a goat, don't confirm it. And if God introduces you as a lion, don't behave like a goat. So as I sat down there, I just took my phone and started doing research. Because I didn't know that COVID-19 was added to the Choose to Challenge um, theme for the women of this year. And so I went to female presidents and the management of COVID-19. I found out that female presidents manage COVID-19 better than male presidents. They compared Angela Merkel with Boris Johnson, who contracted COVID. Angela Merkel acted, um, you know, women, they can know a bad friend very early. The only wrong choice they make is to choose wrong husband because love confuses their brain. They know how to choose hairstyle. They know how to choose cloth. They know how to choose this. But when it comes to man and their brain, all these boys are not too bad. Your mouth, eh? You can confuse an Eskimo to buy a refrigerator. <laughs> Dr. Poki, you're too funny. I don't know that, Sandy. And so, I compared Bangladesh with Pakistan. The Bangladeshi Prime Minister is a woman. She did better than Pakistan. So I added that. When I was given the microphone, I did not complain about not being introduced. I was more interested in introducing myself. It's not only demons that manifest. <laughs> manifest is the content of a sheep or the content of a car or a vehicle. Manifestation is the discharge of your content. <laughs> Whatever you discharge should not be odorous. Bad character smells. The tragedy is that those who have mouth odor don't know. They talk too much too. <laughs> the problem is that those who have body odor don't stay in one place. They always go around. Have you noticed it? Yeah. Bad, <laughs> bad character, bad odor, mouth odor is... <laughs> so I, 
I discharged. I manifested. The hall erupted. When I finished, they gave me a standing ovation. There was a manager sitting near me of Total who didn't bother with me when I greeted him. Every insult should lead to insight. If somebody tells you your mouth is smelling, buy toothpaste and toothbrush. Or go for scaling and polishing. It's not every fight you need to fight. You need to disprove some attitudes. And so, the manager, when I greeted him, he didn't answer me. I felt, but I didn't manifest it. I needed to be a quarter of a million that day. It's not an easy thing to lose like that. So, when I manifested, he, he, he met me. Well done, sir. Sir, don't enter. <laughs> he said, can you give this lecture in my community? Boy, see me. <laughs> Waiting then call me, no be speaker. If this thing refuses to talk, then no they throw yeah. Half a million will follow me from the two lectures. I could have lost that. And people started coming for my card. There is a point God takes you to. Always ask, why am I here? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It's not to create prayer warriors. That's why Africa is poor. They that wait upon the Lord are those anticipating the next move of God. Because if your waiter is waiting upon you, if you may, <coughs> it will bring water for you. But most of you, you don't know when you reach your point of transformation. You don't know how to behave when you need to increase your price. Your pride will make you not to increase your price. There's a way. Every person is looking for somebody is comfortable with. That's why ladies who have, refu who have refused to marry like babies. That's why people praise dead people. A dead man is no longer contesting with you. People hate competition and contest. They hate contention. In fact, God said that you should go and dwell in the bush instead of staying with a quarrelsome and cantankerous and boisterous wife. He said you should stay on top of the roof with vulture instead of living in the same house with a quarrelsome woman. So, Ruth, she bowed down. She could have started posing. Um, in my country, Moab, you see, when there was famine in your place, your people came to our place and we fed them. Shut up your mouth. <laughs> Shut up your mouth. <laughs> If your country was that good, you wouldn't be here. Your father's wealth is not your wealth. Your father's history is not your history. That you came from purple canoe house, you are not purple. Maybe you are even purple. <laughs> so, and that's the problem with people like us, our children who are rich. They look down on every person and compare every person with us. But the man who will help you might be less than a pokey. And so she bowed down and said how would you how did you notice me a stranger she walked on the psychology of Boaz her religion his religion and his culture his religion despises treating a stranger uh, in the whole middle east before taliban and all this came you don't treat a stranger wrongly even in Igbo land, a one one is treated with more caution and respect than Amala. Oyomba in Aba area is treated with more dignity than a native son. And so he knew the emotions of Boaz. He, she knew the psychology of Boaz. She knew the religious inclination of Boaz. And so she appealed to them. Every day you market yourself. And when you market yourself around people, be conscious of their religious inclinations. There's a joke some of you already know. In fact, if you want to sew clothes, you're a fashion designer. You want to sew clothes for a deeper life person. Don't make the colors bright. You don't go and sell shoes where all Lumba people are present. You won't make profit. You say sell white cloth. <laughs> It's if you don't know these things, you will be talented, you will be gifted, you will be anointed, you will even have good character. 
you won't marry. The girls in the street marry before our girls in the church because the girls in the street know the rules of the street. There are two books, Why Men Marry Bitches, Why Men Love Bitches. Two white colors. Go and read them. And ironically, I don't know how, all these girls in the streets that have done abortion and they get pregnant very easily. I don't know why. <laughs> the next thing, when she treated, okay, I was talking about the advert. Three boys were selling, one was selling yam, one was selling bread, one was selling water. And bishops came for a convention, a synod. And um, the Igbo boy that was selling bread went to the bishop, Unamuku, uh, please, this is the bread of life. If you eat it, you will hunger no, hunger no more. Bishop said, this, these are the Christians who are encouraging Dr. Poki, is encouraging to go into entrepreneurship. He had bread, but he bought. The Yoruba boy went. That there might be no... He <laughs> is the water of life. If you drink it, you shall test no more. John chapter 4 came into the mind of the, of the bishop. He bought water, even though he has water. Then there was an Akwaibon boy. He had yam. And he needed to sell yam to the bishops. So he carried the yam and held it near the bishop. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. <laughs> he, he was saying, I am that I am. But because of the inclination of the bishop, the bishop was hearing, I am that I am. So bishop bought all his yams. Every person is a product. Every person has a customer. Whether there are customers, um, 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 people marketing before you, know how to market yourself and create a unique selling point for yourself. If you read further on, always do a SWOT analysis. Your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. Always do a SWOT analysis. There was a man in my street. He would use his car. He used his car one day to block the street that my drivers shouldn't pass with the vehicles that were carrying children. But he played a wrong game. I was not the one around. It was my wife. So she messed up with a tigress. I relate with my wife with caution. She said, worry babe, I'm a worry boy. I have everything to lose if I fight with her. She's not a guest speaker. She's a home speaker. <laughs> so I relate with my wife in terms of negotiation. But don't mess up around my wife if you are not Dr. Poki. She will mess you up. The man just put his vehicle there. Cross the road during closing time. And then people were saying, call your husband. Call your husband. I said, my husband is preaching. I don't need to disturb him with this kind of thing. I can handle this. She just called her driver. She said, carry this vehicle, throw it away. The man was shocked. My hefty drivers just carried the vehicle, threw it away. Then when I came back, I cursed the vehicle. May no man drive you again. They brought all the mechanics. They couldn't repair it. They had to butcher it. But I needed to reconcile. Because I can't start fighting my neighborhood. It's better to fight outside than fight at home. So one day I was passing and the, the son came to meet me. He said that um, he wanted to go to Abuja and he needed 2,000 naira to go to Abuja. I said, I won't give you the money. Call your mother. I will give the money to your mother. And so I know what I was doing. So I went to their compound. <laughs> the mother met me. I said, I will bring the money to you. If I gave the money to her in my school, I won't get the expected results. So I went to their compound and the center of the... It's, it's not every time you say, let your left hand not know what your right... Sometimes they need to know. <laughs> if, I, if I build house for you, people not going to know. Now those small, small offering when they give poor people. If I make you a minister now, they're going to know. So, <laughs> so I went to their compound and gave the woman the money in the middle of their compound with the husband watching. The woman knelt down. 
Me go as a friend though. Any man will trouble you for this street. Now God go kill him. <laughs> and my husband, they trouble me. So my troubles ended. Tell somebody, use your brain. Use your brain. Tell somebody, don't be coconut you carry. Coconut you carry. Tell a lady, say, don't only put attachment. Don't put, attachment. put some files in your brain. Get sense, not because. Ruth bowed down and said, I am not up to any of your handmaids. That is to say, I am not better than your servants. Assuming she went there and started posing for the other girls that were there, that Boaz has not married. You know, Boaz has been single for some time. And he was a rich man. And then Boaz just came, just noticed this one that came out, came there newly, and was discussing with her, eating with her, and Boaz has not eaten with them. Don't you know they will antagonize her? They can even tell lies. They will say what? Some of you don't know how to handle your enemies. For Holy Ghost fire won't kill some of your enemies. The Bible says the Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, but you must have appetite to eat. So she diffused the likely tension that will have arisen. But remember that she took permission from her mother-in-law before she went out. That's social I mean, social intelligence. As a young pastor or preacher then, I was already 30-something. I want to go and preach. I will go and meet Bishop Edo Hansen. Sir, I want to start preaching this year now. Please pray for me. He will pray for me. As he prays for me, there is no contention or rivalry between me and him. Listen, never, there are 48 laws of power. There's one of the laws there. Never outshine your boss. No matter how talented. Most of the churches I go to preach, I don't pray for any person. Once I finish preaching, I give the microphone and go away. Let him pray for them. If anything subsequently happens, when they are sharing the testimony, my name is not involved. And the gate is always open for me. Because touch people on our mountain, they cause problems. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus when Remadu say it or when Remadu. I was sick, and Bishop has been praying and praying and praying. And I said, No, it is not by title, it is by anointing. So I just went to Dr. Apoke and he prayed Dickin Apoke. Then I was a Dickin and you know I was decaying there. <laughs> and I just went to Dickin Apoke. Bishop used to shout, to, he didn't even shout. He said, Go and be healed. I don't die, finish that word. Up. <laughs> My ministry has ended. Am I talking to somebody? There are some compounds you stay, don't buy a car that will intimidate your landlord, your rent will increase. You are working for some. My friend was uh, one of my boys I mentor. Was uh, working for his elder brother that is very rich. I told him, when you go there, behave like a poor man, no matter what he pays you. Before you know it, I don't know what he was. He took. He was taken from there, or he was buying some things, and then some of the workers knew. Went to tell his elder brother that he was building a house. The elder brother said, how can you be building a house and you're working for me? You must be stealing my money. They didn't need to know. My landlady didn't know I had buildings until the day I gave her a quick notice. <laughs> she calls me Boki. She said, Boki, now you can't give me quick notice. I said, mama, sometimes they give quick notice. I didn't let her know that I had property, that I had buildings, that I was preparing, it was my wife that now said, go, go tell and say with the park by April 1st. And I went and told her. And I left. 
But I could have been quarreling. The son wants to fight with me. Today he's calling me daddy. I could have degenerated to fighting with him. The easiest way is when a landlord insults you, build a house and live there. A good landlord is a bad omen because you go and plant flower in another person's compound. So <laughs> your mother-in-law is talking, know how to answer. Your father-in-law is talking, know how to answer. Your mother-in-law comes to a visit, don't say, mommy, when are you going? Finish, finito. Your husband has hot temper. Please, there is a way to diffuse hot temper. Smith Wigglesworth was not a Christian. And the wife will go to fellowship and you know church women. You love God more than God himself. My wife, my wife, I travel, come. Say one go all night. We all should go all night. Since I know did. And I need to travel to Jerusalem. Say they go on. Now ask her. <laughs> the pastor, pastor wife, when he comes to, not be from America, he say yes. You don't come. <laughs> so the, before you are telling your husband that you are going for all night, make sure you understand what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> don't look at me like that. A man that wanted to use the airport and fly and the air controller refused to permit him, don't go and ask him for Gary money the next day. It will behave like two wires that came into <laughs> Just simple thing. <laughs> Social intelligence. So Smith what locked the husband, the wife out. She went for prayer meeting, came back Locked, she, the door was locked. The woman knocked, Smith Wigglesworth refused to open. Then early in the morning, Smith Wigglesworth opened. And she told Smith Wigglesworth, Honey, what will I have for breakfast? What will you have for breakfast? Man locked you outside in the cold. Then you woke up, he woke up in the morning, you asked him, What will you have for breakfast? If now, Robo Baby. It don't start today. It's a fire of God. Burn them. Any spirit troubling us, fire. The woman was going for fellowship the next day. Smith Wigglesworth started dressing. Dressed. Madam, I said, What? He said, I want to see that pastor that is teaching you to behave like this. And he got, there, got born again. Became one of the greatest healing evangelists. That woman died when he traveled. He was not around. He got there and said, you did not, he woke the woman up. He said, you did not tell me you were going. The woman said, why did you bring me from the bliss I'm enjoying? He said, please let me go back. And he said, you can go back. Christianity will have lost that man a woman, if a woman had bad mouths. Am I talking to somebody? Let me say this and I'm done. I said it previously. Know the appetite of whoever you are relating with. If I want to speak to villagers, I speak pidgin English. If I want to do manifestation of his power, I do it. In some circumstances, all those Okiri area where demons set Kara. You know, poor man demon. Eh? Poor man demon is as troublesome as poor man. When you go to Europe, <laughs> when you go to Europe and you are casting out demons from white people, those demons don't like trouble. They just fall gently. But all those Borok, uh, all those Okiri, I mean, <laughs> and uh, they are the ones that set Kara. So when I want to go to such places, me, I prepare to. Prepare. And, and I know how to handle them. But I don't come to this environment and start saying, take it there. Take it there. If you go to World Base Assembly, Lagos, Humphrey Rumacast Church, 
the board, the screen is there. As you are preaching, if you don't say anything reasonable, if you said hallelujah, they will write hallelujah. You will see only hallelujah dead until you leave. Nobody will ever come and meet like this church. Nobody ever comes to meet me. Daddy, please pray for me. Because he has taught them. So you go there, you start struggling. Know the environment you are in. A young man went to BGC, was preaching. Madam, I see the anointing for you to get visa. The woman said, I've traveled so much now, I'm tired of traveling. <laughs> tired of traveling. Say, say, Mama, please lay hands on my head. <laughs> <laughs> every person you are relating with before you go for interview they are watching you from the gate the way you close the door behind you American visa they are watching you in the embassy people are watching you in fact the level you are in now is the level you have earned the level you have earned when you are ready to be in the global arena, know how people behave in the global arena. If you want to enter a class of people, know if you want to be a contractor, know how shell contractors behave. And don't let the Bible close your eyes to the wisdom in the street. The Bible was written in an agrarian era and it is still alive, but know how to apply it to the contention in the street. Know the strength of your enemies and the weaknesses of your enemies and then overcome them. Only the knowledge and insight David had, any man could have killed Goliath. But he said, you uncircumcised Philistine. Because a death sentence is upon him for being uncircumcised. God bless you.